So our favorite engineer has finally gotten her prime, but obviously, is it that good? Is it really good enough to replace the original? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's go ahead and review Protea Prime. Now, how has the engineer of the Deadlock Protocol been enhanced by her two fathers, Ballas and Parvos? Well, she hasn't really gained much in stats as she has in her looks. So when it comes to her stats, what has she gained? She, well, she's gained higher armor being at 185 compared to 135. She's gained higher energy being at 200 to 250 instead of 175 to 225. Additionally, she now has an, an, another dash polarity. So now she has a V in two dashes instead of a V in a singular dash. But other than that, she has identical shields and health at level zero to max and still has a universal polarity. Now, is she overall better than her normal non-prime? To be honest, stat wise, it is nothing to write home about, but I'd say it is slightly worth it to actually go for the prime, especially since it is easier to get the prime over getting the normal. But other than that, the Prime also has better looks, she's more flashy, she's brighter, and that's basically what you want to see out of a Prime, something that's nice to look at at all, at all times. But obviously, what about the builds? How should you build her? So for today, I have two builds for you. One of them is consistent with her normal base kit, nothing added on, nothing uh, changed, etc. The other build has this assumed ability I never thought I would actually use. So. Enough chit chat, let's go ahead and cover those two builds, shall we? Now, let's go ahead and cover those builds I was talking about. Because, like I said, we have her normal build with nothing subsumed off or on, and then we have this certain one right here. But first, let's cover the Temporal Strip build. When it comes to the Temporal Strip build, the whole point of this is to use your 4, spam your 1, spam your 2, and use your 3 on the occasion just to guarantee that you keep having energy. So, the whole point of it is, when you get a chance, you hit four. While you're in your four, you'll throw one, you'll throw two. And if you want, you can hit three or you can hold one to get your shields. That's about it. The whole build is just throwing your one, your two and getting your four off. So I'll go ahead and show off its effectiveness. So you press four and let's just throw one to show it off. So as you see, it cuts off their armor quite quickly, quite rapidly. Same thing with the uh, turret one it literally took one shot from him and like i said when you get 100 percent, you can sometimes drop your uh, uh dispensary and you'll get your extra wards and as you saw they all died already the reason they all died already is well we armor stripped them and these are on steel path as well so let's go ahead and show that off again once again you'll press four and you'll press one there one there and occasionally two and as you see once their armor is stripped they're just going to have to succumb to either the turret the slash procs or your gun or whenever your four explodes like that so obviously the build works quite well and it's actually a very strong build i've been using it in conjunction survivals or anything where there's armor and i know i can strip it off and deal a lot of damage but let's go ahead and get into the next build shall we so next up is the other build i was talking about the one where i have subsumed an ability that i never thought i'd use and it is quite a weird one the name should give it away I subsumed on Sentient Wrath. Now you're probably thinking, why the hell did you subsume on Caliban's uh, subsumed helmet ability? Well, weirdly enough, it's quite strong. Like it, it does what you would want nicely. It has CC, it causes enemies to take more damage, and it overall just helps you with survivability because of it being a CC. So let's go ahead and spawn some enemies. And, oh, I forgot to get energy. So the whole point about uh, Sentient Wrath is when you press it, it is in like a cone. So you can basically press it anywhere. I'm going to press it right here. Once you do that, you see they all start floating. And during this time, they take extra damage. As you see as they just kind of just keel over and die to the uh, Velox. But obviously, what happens if you mix it with your Warframe abilities? We're not just trying to look at them like that. So let's kill these guys real quick. Pop or we can battle group in there. Something I will show off too. When you get your 100% ability strength boost, if you go to your abilities, you have a guaranteed damage vulnerability of 116. That will basically make sure that you will get a ton off, but press 4 and throw your grenades. When you have them out, they'll be taking a slash box, and since they're more damage vulnerable, they're obviously going to keep dying to, obviously, the damage box. And if you want, cast your, uh, cast your, tempo I almost said temporal anchor. Cast your turret so your turret can attack them whenever they're damage vulnerable, but obviously you're not just going to be purely using your abilities and the damage vulnerability is quite useful overall. The only downside of it being in this room is because since it has such a high ceiling, enemies fly off pretty easily. 
but the whole point of the build is to take advantage of the damage vulnerability. So I'm going to go put on a quick weapon and show off a example as to why I think Sentient Wrath is a very good option on her. So as you can probably tell, only about one weapon on me has changed. I now have a pair of dual toxicists on. Now you're probably thinking, okay, well, it's a pair of dual toxicists. What's special? It's the card on that special about it. So while the Amprex does not work with it, the dual toxicists do. So the Amprex can't chain, but the dual toxicists can ricochet. So what I want to show off is the fact of if you get any percentage of your dual toxicist and Karnon, when you press four to cause them to take more damage overall and just hold left click, well, that happens. They kind of just uh, get melted like butter. Simple as that. That is basically the whole premise of this build. Be very good for your weapons, be very good for your abilities, etc. So obviously, these are stationary enemies. How will they perform in the actual thing? I'm going to go to a Steel Path Survival. We're going to go test this out. So I will see you guys in Steel Path. All right, so here we are in Steel Path. I went ahead and brought my Dual Toxis, my Burst on, my Okinas, and I brought back my Volpa Philo. So obviously, how does she perform in, well, a outside of a Simulacrum area? Well, I'm using the Sentient Wrath build instead of the um, Armor Strip build purely because I wanted to show off how this build works more than anything else. So Obviously, lift them up and then just start doing this to them. And, well, they can't really fight back, obviously. They're kind of stuck there, just accepting the fact that they're going to get mauled on by either my turret, my guns, or something of the similar. Because, as you see, the turret's doing the job quite easily. I'm not really struggling. Energy is a bit of an issue, but as the point of Arcane Energize, using your dispensary, stuff like that. But, as you can see, nothing really is having any issues getting killed. And since that is an AoE, it goes around me all the way, so I never have to worry about something not getting CC'd. Obviously, as you can tell, it's very good for making sure that your guns do the thing that you're after, which is, well, uh, being able to kill, obviously. And with all these kills we've gotten, we're now at 132% damage vulnerability. That's the advantage of Molt Augmented. And, well, just guarantees more damage that we deal. So press that button, throw those out, pop one of those, turn over here, throw one of those out. Place a dispensary with the extra bonus so I get even more drops and just start shooting. But obviously, y'all don't want to just keep seeing all the normal ads keep dying, so I'm going to get back to y'all when a Acolyte spawns. Well, that didn't take long at all, I'm going to be honest with you, because the uh, Tormentors are... not Tormentor. Now I'm, playing, now I'm thinking of Destiny. The uh, Acolyte is already here. Where is he? Alright, let's pop this. Well, that's kind of funny. Kind of just doing circles around with them. And it does seem like my uh, Sentient Wrath does indeed affect him, so he was taking more damage from it as well, so that's perfect to know. But obviously, uh, I'm just going to keep and I'm just going to keep killing these guys until I'm able to extract. So, once I'm able to extract, I will go ahead and give y'all my final thoughts on Protea and well, we're back. So, what do I think about her? Well, overall, I think Protea in general is a really really good frame. She has offense, she has defense, she has survivability, and she, well, covers the three bases very well. She has good damage because she applies slash with her grenade fan, as you see, applies slash, and also gives you a shield, which gives you shield a second, which scales with uh, power strength. Your blaze artillery does heat damage, also does normal damage, and it has good range, good firing arc, it lasts for a good amount of time as long as you spec some duration and it does good damage overall. Her dispensary gives healing, ammo, energy, and you have chances of getting extra pickups, which is always nice. Uh, if you run to fissures, you can get three. I've actually seen four come out of a dispensary before. And with her temporal shift, which if I go here, uh, temporal anchor, it's not bad, especially if you use temporal erosion with it, it's a very good uh, augment, and overall temporal anchor is not that bad as it can save you, say you're low on health, quickly pop four, move around. If you get shot, it'll just revert you back to where you were originally, basically resetting you. But obviously, if you wish to subsume anything, that is the uh, thing to subsume off. I recommend things like Sentient Wrath. If you want, you can run Eclipse, you can run Roar. Uh, if you want more of a uh, way to entangle more enemies, go for things like Ensnare uh, or I think uh, Cola Horizon may work. If you wish for more ad clear overall, you can go for Breach Surge. 
If you wish to just uh, stop enemies in their place, you can even use Condemn. Uh, Fire Blast, I think, would even work, funnily enough. Gloom, Pillage, anything that basically does what you're looking for. Obviously, you can run it. Nourish if you really want, but I don't think Nourish is that useful on it. But do I recommend buying the Prime Access? I'm going to personally say no to the highest tier. No to... Already a prime complete pack. Do not buy the complete pack. If anything, just buy, if you wish to buy it, just go with the prime pack where you get the frame, the gun, the daggers, and the platinum. If you want the accessory pack, obviously you can go for it. But other than that, maybe just go for the normal relics as uh, it's not that hard of a farm. But uh, if you guys want to see more reviews like this, do make sure you guys tell me in the comments. Obviously, uh, a Velox, ri uh, Velox ri <laughs> A Velox video will be out soon. It's just the issue is uh, they killed the uh, Riven Dispo on it, sadly. It's basically no link and put. So using this Riven that I had is basically useless. I might as well keep rolling it. But overall, as you can see, I'm testing some builds to see if they work. But uh, like I said, tell me what other frames, other weapons you guys want to see me uh, review in the comments. And the Discord is up. It'll be in the description. Make sure you guys come over and stop by. I'll play games with y'all whenever you want. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace out, my guys.